Happy 4th of July. Well, it's 4th of July today, but you guys are going to watch this video probably four or five weeks from now. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, yesterday I posted a video uh, talking about how I think HTML5 is a great thing for the future of computing and how it alleviates the need for a binary plugins like Flash, uh, Silverlight, uh, and Java. Um, and uh, I think most of you agreed with me, but I did get uh, at least two comments, uh, two different people commenting on uh, how uh, we still need Flash and these other plugins. And um, I just want to talk about that for a little bit because uh, it was just really weird that there were people defending Flash like it's a great thing. First off, I want to point out some of the things these people said, um, which were uh, I'm not sure if maybe I'm misunderstanding them or they were misunderstanding me because uh, both these people mentioned Flash but then they talked about the need uh, there will always be a need for plugins um, and in the video when I'm talking about plugins and I think I've made this clear in the video I'm talking about binary plugins as I said Flash, Silverlight and Java now that I think Java's bad I think Java's great I just don't think it belongs in a browser and there will be people who disagree with me, and we can have those disagreements, that's fine. Um, but, but Silverlight and Flash, I mean, I think they're just horrible um, in any aspect. So, but when they say we will always need plugins, I agree. I love uh, Chrome extensions and Firefox plugins. Um, and I don't know much about making Firefox plugins, but as far as Chrome extensions, they're pretty much just JavaScript. And that's one of the great things about using HTML and HTML5 is that it's easily manipulated, uh, which one of the things those people said uh, was that, that they want to see uh, markup languages go away, which I can completely disagree with, uh, because really anything that's uh, text uh, is easily manipulated so the end user can turn it into whatever they want and that is a great thing for freedom um, but going back to the binary thing like I said Flash, Silverlight and Java are the three that come to mind I'm sure there's probably others I know back in the day we used to have uh, plugins for videos but Flash kind of took over that and now we have HTML5 one of the other things one of the people said was HTML5 is uh, going to take another five years before it gets uh, is able to do features like um, facial recognition and voice recognition and uh, and that we need I guess flash for that let me let me go on to that in saying that um, first off one of the things that person said before they said that was uh, HTML5 can't do everything and I would 100% agree with that and I'll tell you why because HTML5 is not a programming language it's a tagging language it's a markup language for the GUI interface it's just a GUI interface it's like uh, saying that GTK or QT can't do something that's right because they're just interfaces you need a programming language behind them so yeah HTML5 can't do everything it's not supposed to um, but it's just a front end for for whatever language you're going to pipe through it and as far as needing uh, flash to do or some sort of plugin to do facial recognition or voice recognition um, and that it's going to take HTML5 10 years to get there. Well, once again, HTML5 is not, I don't see it doing that since it's not a programming language. But we already have those things without plugins. If you've ever used uh, Google Plus or, or Facebook, they do facial recognition and there's no flash involved in that as far as I can tell. Um, one thing HTML5 does do for us is it does allow us to access uh, cameras and audio devices uh, through HTML. Now, with that, uh, it's accessing it as if it was a file. Um, so the one thing, and I've been trying since I've read these people's comments, to think of that um, I can't. I can a, a scenario where uh, there's something that can't be done in a web browser now, utilizing HTML5 and JavaScript, whatever backend language you use. 
Um, and the only thing I can think of off the top of my head, well, not off the top of my head, I've been thinking about it for about 12 hours now since last night, is uh, video and audio streaming. Because as I said, although HTML5 now allows you to access your webcam and microphones, uh, it, it retrieves it as sort of a file and then will upload it to the server. I don't think it can do any type of streaming. Um, which is something I, you know, video chats have become more popular. Um, and that would be nice to see something in the browser that doesn't uh, require uh, an external plugin. Now, I know Firefox, I saw a video the other day, Firefox is working on having its own built-in video chat system, which is actually built into the browser, which is my whole point, is that I think uh, as much that can be done, should be done by the browser, that your browser is your gateway to the internet. It's there to protect you. Every time you throw another um, binary plugin there, uh, plug in there, it's going to increase your chances of security issues. I'm not saying that there are going to be security issues. I'm just saying it's increasing your chance because it's like having multiple windows. There's more windows to break into. I'm talking about windows on like a house or a building, not the operating system. So, so I think I've touched on most of what those people have said. So yeah, I guess if you want to do video streaming through a web browser, you're going to need a plugin. I know Flash can access your webcam. Uh, Java can. I don't know much about Silverlight. I've only played with a few things in it. Um, or you would need another binary plugin like Google Talks uh, Hangout uh, plugin. And I would love to see all these things be replaced with in-browser um, options. HTML5, JavaScript, that sort of stuff. Um, and besides that little scenario of streaming video and audio, that's the only thing I can think of that you, that you still need plugins, binary plugins for. But of course, extensions and Firefox plugins, which are still being run by the browser, uh, I think are great. It's when you have those external tools that are kind of bypassing the browser is where I have an issue. And the fact, and also that's that's from a person-to-person -person thing those plugins are for. A website shouldn't require those plugins. Um, so that's my view on that. Now, there was one thing the person said they were talking about backwards compatibility and how uh, you can't use HTML5 because it's not backwards compatible. And, and I just, I'm going to stop right there and say that's a good thing to bring up. Because I used to have a list of five things that I thought were the top five things that were uh, important when you're designing software as a developer. And really, I kept cutting away at that list, and basically it all boils down to compatibility. Um, and when you write a program, you should make it as compatible as possible, uh, both with uh, other software it's going to interact with, operating systems or external tools, or uh, also hardware, you should make it run as efficient as possible on as many different hardware platforms. Uh, and that's, if you've watched my tutorials series on cross-platform packaging, um, you'll see it writing software for to work on all major operating systems is not hard. It's packaging it for distribution is the difficult part. But HTML5, for the most part, is backwards compatible uh, in that uh, a lot of its features uh, give a little more pizzazz to what you do, but if you're using an older browser, it just defaults to the old input types. Um, obviously, things like the HTML canvas isn't going to be backwards compatible, uh, and you would need an up-to-date browser, but you can't really control what software other people are using. So if someone's choosing to use an old browser, what you need to do is recommend that they upgrade, both for usability and security. And HTML5 does have that built in into that if you have maybe a video player or a canvas in your HTML5, it will detect if your browser is compatible or not and it will recommend, well you as a designer or developer can have it recommend them upgrade. Um, but the same would be true if you're using Flash. It's like you need to keep up to date with Flash uh, if you want to work with the newer features. And, um, and you always have to have Flash installed or Silverlight installed or Java installed and enabled or uh, ActiveX is another one, a horrible thing. Um, but let's look at an example of a basic HTML5 application 
Uh, and I'm going to use the one in the series that I've uh, just finished working on, on uh, making a jQuery mobile uh, interface for submitting uh, information, uh, a form for my use at work. Uh, if I remember, I'll put an annotation on the screen to that playlist on making that application. But let's go ahead and have a look at it. Well, now it's time to put what I said to the test. I went out to my garage where I have a stack of really old computers and pulled out the slowest one possible. This one has 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, and we're going to load it up and see if that application works on this old piece of hardware. Okay, let's give it a shot. We're going to type in the inventory number. We're going to choose who we are from the drop down. We're going to choose where we are from the station. Going to choose what engine we're on from the drop down here. We can type in our comments and is the bottle full or not? We'll click yes and there we go. Okay, so we can see it working on an old piece of hardware, but I know what some of you are saying, that's still a modern browser, which is kind of my point. Even on old hardware, a modern browser supporting HTML5 will work, so there's no excuse not to use it. But let's go a step further and look at another scenario. Let's say your hardware is so old that you don't even have a GUI interface. Will this work in that situation? Well, yeah. Okay, so we've looked at uh, HTML5 uh, on a older machine, still running a modern browser. It was Mittery was the browser I was running because uh, Firefox and Chrome probably be a little bulky for that machine with 128 megabytes of RAM. Um, but uh, here we're going to look at a text-based uh, browser um, using links and um, it is definitely not HTML5 compatible, also doesn't support JavaScript. So let's see how that application works. Uh, so I'm here, I'm logged into my website, uh, bottle.php, I'll hit enter there, here it is. Uh, the formatting is a little off because I made it, I made that, um, uh, this application, uh, designed it for mobile devices, but I also wanted to make sure it was still compatible with desktop devices, so the, the stuff doesn't have new lines, so everything's kind of on li one line here, but if I was to resize the screen down, everything would adjust. Um, but still, functionality-wise, I can type in an inventory number. I can type, I can hit this, choose who I am from the drop-down list, choose who I am from the station, or where I am in the station list, and what truck I'm working on. I can also type in some comments here, and then we have our yes or no, which also submits. Uh, and this is where we do have one issue. So far, the interface works, which is the HTML5, because everything defaults back, even though that this was a, uh, a number uh, type input, older browsers will just see it as a regular text input. These are drop downs, they still work. This is a text box. So HTML5, when it comes to basic forms and basic functionality that would, would have been available in HTML5, or before HTML5, does work backwards compatible. Problem in this particular application comes when I choose to submit it with the yes or no button. I can click those and nothing happens. And the reason for that is not HTML5, but because this browser doesn't support JavaScript and I am using JavaScript to submit the information. But luckily, since uh, we're using HTML here, it's very easy to modify stuff. And with a few lines of code, what I could do is I can either turn these this into a basic submit form, which would fix the problem. Or if I like still using um, uh, jQuery to use Ajax to post the information in the background, what I could do is have the basic HTML, HTML5 or not, um, display a submit button, which is actually a form submit. But if JavaScript is available, have the JavaScript replace it with these buttons. So. Uh, this particular instance, I did not design it to be this far back compatible because I do, did have modern browsers in mind, um, mainly mobile devices. But you can see that uh, as far as the HTML, the interface uh, is still uh, very much compatible. So HTML5, once again, besides things like Canvas and uh, the video player, which as a developer, as a designer and developer of this uh, site or program, um, you need to keep those things in mind. And it's very easy to put an if then statement or something like that, which kind of HTML5 kind of takes care of for you, where 
if you decide to use HTML to play a video, you could have the option to either display a message saying you need to update your browser, or if you really don't want to put that on the end user, you would um, have it, I guess, default to a Flash player at that point. But once again, that's not a, a, a fault of HTML5. That's a user not upgrading their software, and the same would be true if they didn't upgrade their Flash and you're using a feature that's newer in Flash or whatever plugin that they're using. Um, so... Let's switch back to uh, camera here. That's better. So basically my point at this point, my point now, um, is something that I actually thought about doing a whole other video talking about, which is uh, properly designing your software and really uh, what you need to worry about more than the look and feel is functionality. Now, look and feel is obviously important, but functionality should come first. and you and my opinion and I think a lot of developers would agree with me back end comes first you create the functionality application and then you create the GUI interface and HTML5 once again is just the GUI interface so really when it comes to a website uh, depending on what you're doing you're going to do stuff on the client side or server side and a lot of the functionality is going to be on the server side um, once again depending on what you're doing what your uh, you know end user is um, but you have a lot more control and you know more what's going on obviously as for security stuff should always be done on the server side client side should be more of the user interface even the java aspect of it should be user interface um, sorry javascript aspect of it should be user interface so use html5 and css to make the page look nice and you can use the javascript to make your drop downs or search bars but even if they didn't have JavaScript, those form elements should still be able to fill it out and submit to a server side. Once again, as a developer, it's up to you to make things compatible, uh, but HTML5 as a standard is, for the most part, features that were there before still function out. It gives them a little more pizzazz, as I would say, giving you inputs like date fields, number input fields, um, and stuff like that. Um, Another thing I want to uh, uh, mention is, what was it that I wanted to mention? HTML5 is still in development, if that's even the right word, since it's not really, I guess the browsers are developing to meet the standard, because HTML5 is just a standard saying how things should be done. Not everyone follows it, both on designer side and, and uh, browser side. Um, but it's right now 2013 and I believe HTML5 their goal is to have the standard done and in place by 2015 so it's not even done yet so yeah maybe if you're making a website for the masses there would be certain things obviously that you want to avoid but luckily there's places where you can go um, W3 schools is a great place where they'll talk about the features and they'll give you little icons on what browsers support and don't support this feature and of course as always when you're creating software which is basically what you're doing here um, is you uh, should test it in as many scenarios as possible I write a program I'm gonna test it on different types of hardware I'm gonna type it on different operating systems uh, and see if it runs differently on them and if so if there's anything I can do about it you should test your website or web application the same way. Different operating systems, different browsers. You may not have that option always. You may not have a bunch of different types of hardware. You may not have an iPhone to test this on. Uh, and Or you may not have a Mac OS or a Windows OS. Uh, luckily, uh, things like Chrome, Firefox, and Linux, anyone can boot up a live CD and test it, so there's no excuse not to test that there. And uh, unfortunately, um, Different browsers do sometimes render things differently, and even uh, I've had people tell me and, and display that, and I would expect, expect different browsers to render things slightly different, but supposedly Firefox on Windows compared to Firefox on Linux sometimes renders things slightly different. Most of the time those things are, slight, are just cosmetic and not function-wise. Um, and some people are pickier about cosmetics than, than I am. For me, yeah, I really want my applications to look nice, but functionality is number one. 
uh, you know, and when I say functionality, I mean that it functions on as many devices and as many operating systems as possible. Once again, coming back to compatibility. So um, that's it. As always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day, and I hope that you are safe today on the 4th of July, even though you're watching this weeks later. So hopefully everyone still has all 10 fingers and 11 toes. Have a great day.